Hey Jody here. This is part three of the TIG welder review. Looked like there's going to be a part four because I'm only going to talk about one welder today and this is the welder that's going to be in the giveaway. I mentioned a couple videos ago I was going to do a, a giveaway on an ACDC TIG welder. Well I've had this welder uh, sitting in a box. In fact it's been sitting in a box so long that they have since uh, produced a, a, a later version of it with some upgrades and so I figured well that's a good good reason to do a giveaway. I actually welded 20 or 30 parts with it already uh, just the other day and I pushed it pretty hard up around 90% of its max amperage. All right, so this is the welders in the giveaway. There is a requirement to be eligible for the giveaway and basically the, the simplest way I know to do this is just you need to be on my email list. That way I can download all that and have all the names and emails right in front of me. The way that you get on the email list go to weldingtipsandtricks.com underneath the video that's on the home page there there's a little box you enter your email Names optional. You don't even have to enter your name, and then you'll get an email to confirm that it was you that that and you really want this. All the email involves is once a week when I post my weekly videos, you'll get a very short email saying what it's about, two or three paragraph graphs max. You're not going to get a three-page email on what new trick my dog learned or anything like that. It's uh it's strictly to the point. I'll even put a link right away in the in the email so you don't even have to scroll down. That takes you to my web page. The video is there as well as on YouTube, but it takes you to my web page and, and sometimes there's more information there than is on the YouTube video. Like I forget to include settings sometimes and I'll include them on the web page. That's it. Very simple. You can unsubscribe anytime you want. But that's that's how to be eligible for the giveaway. This is June 7th, 2016. So if you're watching this video years from now, <laughs> the giveaway is long gone. That's all I know to do. This is the first time doing something like this, so I'll probably make some mistakes. And, and I may do more in the future uh, if, if they send me a later version of this welder maybe you know who knows I might do a giveaway on that too just trying to pay it forward a little bit so that's a lot of talking and not enough welding so let's let's get to it all right this is the setup I used for one end of the parts that I did a little over 170 amps DC no pulse set on 2T and I just used a torch switch and I walked the cup on a positioner so here's a little preview of what that looked like this will be in detail in a video coming pretty soon you know, the DC arc is as smooth as any. Uh, you're, you don't see a lot of difference from one inverter to another on the DC arc, except when you start getting into pulsing and things like that. So this is just like, like I expected. DC arc, nice and smooth. No downslope, though. So in order to stop, I kind of just had to speed up there and just turn it off. Only rebel child, the family meek and mild. Sing a little Merle Haggard there while I was working. All right, so I've got about 20 of these parts done. I've got 30 more to do, and there's some other pieces that will go on there as well. This is the torch that came with the unit. It's an air-cooled 17, set up with the pretty typical hardware. I think that's a number five cup on there. It's got a torch switch on it. And uh, you can take that off. You can snip the zip ties, totally remove it, take it loose, or you can just double it back, tape it to the, the, uh, the, the cable a couple of feet down to get it out of your way in case you do want to use it. I like the stubby kits on these 17 torches. I sell these at my at my online store, and the reason I like them is just because it really shrinks the torch. It really makes it so much more uh, maneuverable. It feels better in my hand, and I can get up inside things if I need to. To me, it, I just like it. You know, nothing wrong with the other style, but if you if you got to stick it up inside a, a pipe or a piece of square tubing or something, it lets you do it. Well, let's set up for aluminum here. We'll be on AC. 2T, no pulse, start amperage and all that can stay roughly the same. I'll be around 140 amps because I'm going to weld uh, 125,000 stick aluminum. I'm going to try using the torch switch for starters without the pedal. Uh, no pulse, so don't worry about any of that. AC frequency, 120. AC balance, I'm going to start off using 35% cleaning. And my post flow is set on 7. Let's weld some aluminum. First speeds I'm going to run with this are just with the torch switch. So I set the machine on roughly 140 amps. And I know that might be a little hot, but when I hit the trigger, I got 140 amps. But it's still, with aluminum, you know, you have to wait for just a second for things to heat up. And then the way you would just regulate the bead width here is just speed up on your travel speed because you got no amperage control. The torch switch on this unit is strictly on-off, no upslope, no downslope. Uh, but I hit it pretty close here at 140 amps. All right, it's getting a little bit out of control with me. I sped up. It, it got better. Still got a lot of cleaning action, so I'm going to lower it to about 30% here. 
and also drop the amperage just a little bit and see what happens next. I'm trying to kind of dial in some really good sweet spot settings using just the switch here before I switch over to the pedal. And it's getting a little bit better. See, I'm a little bit more consistent on the bead width there. And I'm still not, I'm, to be honest, I'm really not comfortable here. And so that's one of the rules of welding is always be comfortable. You know, A, B, C. Well, here I'm kind of humped over the table standing up and, you know, no excuses. But uh, that's, that's part of it. All the aluminum you see me weld from here on out will be with a foot pedal. I just unplug the torch switch, plug in the foot pedal. And then these are the settings that I found to be the sweet spot. 120 hertz, 30% cleaning, 130 amps. Uh, that's eighth inch thick uh, aluminum that I'm working with here, some angle. Now you can see things have gotten a little bit better now, even, even yet. Now that I've got the foot pedal, I can adjust and not let the pedal puddle get out of hand with me. Things are going pretty well. Now the foot pedal is a little bit of an issue. It's smooth enough. It doesn't scoot on the floor with me, but I do have it set on this, you know, anti-fatigue cushion here, but it's a little hard to push because it's got a spring in there, so it gets harder and harder as you go down. It takes a little getting used to, but as you can see here, I'm kind of getting this thing dialed in now to where it's doing a pretty good job. Well, let's talk about polarity a little bit. We need to know about polarity. I'll try to keep this brief, but uh, it gets... It gets deep sometimes, so bear with me. All right, direct current, electrode negative. If you think about welding current as always flowing from negative to positive, and you don't pay attention to the physicists still arguing that point, uh, we don't care. For, the, for our purposes, flows from negative to positive. Now, when I'm on electrode negative, that means it's flowing from negative, the electrode, to the workpiece, and that means the heat is pinpointed and going into the workpiece. And that's great because that lets you weld steels with a sharpened pointy electrode. It lets you pinpoint the heat, melt almost immediately. As long as you don't contaminate or exceed the amperage uh, capability of that size electrode, you got a sharp point. You can weld and weld and weld for quite a while. And it's great for welding steels. You try that on aluminum though, it's not good. Unless you go with pure helium, you have to check my video on DC welding with helium to, to, to learn more about that. If I try that on aluminum, it's just mud. And that's because there's nothing to break that aluminum oxide up that's on the surface of all aluminum. Uh, you can't see it. You brush it with a wire brush. It reforms to an extent immediately. It just, just you don't want a thick layer of oxide. So it's a good idea to do some brushing sometimes. There's certain jobs you can't brush. Like you don't, you're not going to find somebody doing custom work on polished aluminum tread plate that wants to brush it prior to welding and have all those brush marks right next to the weld on polished tread plate. No bueno. There are certain jobs that it does help to wire brush and that's because of the aluminum oxide and other contaminants that might be on the surface. Just debris, iron particles from grinding in the shop. If you also work on steel, that's a problem. So most jobs it won't hurt anything to brush. Uh, it's not always necessary. <gasps> he said that? It's not always necessary to wire brush aluminum before you weld it. I just, I just gave you an example. Well, let's talk about DCEP for just a minute. That's electrode positive. All right, that's the electrodes positive, so it's flowing from negative to positive. It's called also reverse polarity, like a vacuum cleaner. The current is flowing this way, and it'll heat up your electrode quick. DCEP, if I accidentally hook up my, my uh, torch wrong to the positive, and I hit the pedal, it's gonna ball up, it's gonna melt, that's because all the heat's coming up through the electrode. All right, I get one good thing out of that though, and that's called cleaning action. Uh, stuff's going on in that arc, uh, in that arc zone. <laughs> I just said arc zone, what's up Jim? Stuff's going on in that arc that's very complicated, complex, ions, electrons, plasma, you know, it's just, they hadn't, they hadn't really figured it out yet. So you got stuff going on there, you got a cleaning action, and it's ions bombarding the surface of the, it's bombarding the surface of that uh, aluminum and breaking up the aluminum oxide. Breaks it up. I don't know how it breaks it up. It breaks it up. Now you get a nice, clean, wet, shiny puddle. That's a good thing on aluminum. That lets you know that you're protecting the, the surface of the, of the molten metal from contaminants in the atmosphere, you're protecting it from oxidizing, that means you're not going to have porosity and things like that as long as you have a nice clean puddle. 
usually. That's why we weld aluminum on AC, alternating current, because you get the benefits of the penetration from the electrode negative, you get the benefits of the cleaning from the electrode positive, but not too much or not enough of either. That brings me to AC balance. What's AC balance? Well, now, now you, you know, machines, almost all these inverters have AC balance, except except uh, simplified ones that have it fixed inside, like they'll have it set at around 70% EN. Uh, but this machine's got AC balance and that lets you tweak it. It lets you adjust how much cleaning. So you could adjust more cleaning or more EP, more electrode positive, more cleaning for a dirty boat prop or a dirty, uh, a dirty rim, as opposed to nice, clean, polished aluminum tread plate. But, but AC balance does help to get it dialed in to just the right amount so that you don't have just, just so you have more arc control and possibly sometimes you might want to use one size smaller electrode just a little tweak on the AC balance sometimes will get you there AC frequency AC frequency is the is the frequency at which it changes directions from negative to positive that's what alternating current is it's alternating directions so AC frequency you know older transform machines are fixed at 60 Hertz in the US now you got the ability to adjust it upwards so you can play with that and find different uh, applications for a higher frequency personally I don't use real high frequency a lot occasionally I'll go up to 200 or, or so uh, if I want to really pinpoint a bead try to keep a bead small or keep the bead away from something that's right next to it I weld a lot of stuff at around 75 or 80 Hertz uh, I just like it can't explain why and thick stuff thick castings that take a lot of heat input and I've only got 200 amps with this machine sometimes you can drop it down to about 50 Hertz and get more heat input because all that switching time is time lost on heat input it's my theory anyway right, we're going to take a little look at some AC balance settings now just to show you what happens when you have too much cleaning action I have set the cleaning action to 50% that's more cleaning than you would get with any transformer machine. Uh, but you get a little rectification in, in a, even in a transformer, so it's not even 50-50. I've got the film speed slowed way down here, just so you can see all the magic stuff going on in there. Started off with a sharpened electrode. As I get to a certain amperage, things get squirrely with me, because that electrode's taking up so much heat with the 50% cleaning. A lot of a lot of heat and it's balling up and it's irregular and it's actually I, I believe spitting a little tungsten there into the puddle it sure did contaminate the puddle even though it's got more cleaning it contaminated the puddle and I don't really completely understand that but I do kind of think it spit a little tungsten in there and that that made made it uh, dirty also it just balled up the electrode like crazy and, and provides a sort of an unstable arc not that you can't have a stable arc with an electrode rounded like that or balled up, it's just that in this case it, it was unstable with all that cleaning action. Now starting off with a ball like this can give you some irregular starts at low amperage. If you're going to be, if you're something really thick and you can just, you know, start with high amperage, it does better. But again, I guess contamination here to start with. With all that fluttering around going, it's very hard to direct the arc down into that root and keep it small. Too much cleaning action. Now I'm going to go the other route and see what happens if I max out the AC balance to the left. And so in other words, it's the, 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 uh, the lowest setting for cleaning, which in this case is 20%. Will that be enough cleaning or will it give me a dirty puddle? Some machines, if you max out the cleaning, you'll get a dirty puddle. In this case, I still got plenty of cleaning. Now, this is pretty clean, pretty clean angle here, so that's part of it. You see, it's a lot of cleaning action extending out from the puddle, that frosty looking area. I would definitely recommend buying off Amazon if you were thinking about getting one of these, just because you have another layer, another mediator there. Again, this unit is not the latest and greatest. This is a, at least one version prior. It's got low pulse frequency as opposed to the capability of going on up to 100 or 200 pulses a second. But I wanted to give it a little quick run through and another quick demo before I do the giveaway. So, see you next time.